All right, here we are for the first round, and we've fixed our microphone as well, so hopefully this will uh, sound a little bit better. And let's take a look at our opener. Can you see the screen okay, Nate? I can see the screen perfectly. Okay. Um, this looks great. I'm a this is this is the same. this is the beautiful thing about having a deck with just infinite two drops. Is it like yeah, <laughs> you get to cast your spells. Let's see if we hit that Cloudfin Raptor here on our first draw step. No. Ooh. All right. So normal early game stuff. What do you like leading with here? The uh, Disciple or the Samic Guild Mage against uh, Demir? Um, honestly, I like leading with the Disciple. I do, too, because if they're going to use up a Demir Charm on one of our early plays, we want it to be that, and because the, the Guild Mage is the same card as Disciple early anyway, yeah. right? All right. We could also play the Frilled Oculus. I don't think that's the right play. Because like, we're going to get more damage in early exactly. with this Disciple. All right. We are thinking the same thoughts, sir. Yeah, Demir deck's weakness is that while they... Oh, goodness. What the heck? What a jerk. Where did that come from? <laughs> oh, man, this urban evolution is going to be amazing. Hmm. Like, we're actually have the mana to cast, and we're just going to go off. Yeah. All right, so I like attacking here first. No reason not to. And then I guess we just follow up with a frilled Oculus. Uh, we have to get that guy into play now, yeah. Because he can actually attack through the Krakenura, potentially. Yeah, didn't expect. He's going to snap us off here. Yeah, he didn't. All right, so free damage is a good thing. Respect the burst, kids. Um, do I need to leave up? Yeah, of course I do. And the charger, and the slaughter horn, and the... How often do you actually block there, to be perfectly honest? Uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. Because he's going to evolve. evolve it now, and then you block. Because yeah. then if they use it, it's like, fine. Exactly. Wow! So he's not actually Demir. He's not actually We found the other Simic deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, so we've got a Disciple and a Guild Mage here. Next turn, we're very likely going to be Urban Evolutioning. What we can do here is uh, like play out one of our two drops, like our Tzamek Guild Mage, and then leave up Spell Rupture for two to keep him off of his five drops. That's exactly what I recommend doing, because it yeah. also gives us the ability to uh, potentially set up a favorable lock with that Oculus. Yeah, he doesn't have any attacks right now because of the Oculus. If he attacks in, then we're going to be in kind of a weird spot. Yeah. That gridlock, gridlock is going to be sweet at some point. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think he's splashing the black for? Undercity Informer. <laughs> That's the one you think it is? I mean, it's the best, one of the best black cards in the set. All right, so, so he's got a Rust Scarab, which actually still, and he's playing that in his first main to get that Krakenura, but he doesn't have any actual attacks here, which is kind of sweet. Um, but we don't really care about Rust Scarab, I don't think that much, because it can't attack through our Frilled Oculus either. Yeah, we probably should have countered it still. Uh, yeah, actually, you're probably right, because we want to untap an Urban Evolution here. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I think we should change plans and, and go for the Snapjaw instead. Let's see. That's going to be really hard for him to attack through, and we can, <clears throat> uh, if we hit a land, we can Urban Evolution with Spell Rupture next turn. Plus, uh, Snapjaw makes Urban Evolution just like, or it makes a Spell Rupture just like hard counter, basically. What, yeah. do you, what do you like here? I mean, I definitely, uh, this is a tough one. Um, like, because I think this adaptive Snapjaw on defense is is pretty amazing. Yeah, here. not countering that guy was so bad. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. But, but uh, yeah, definitely Snapjaw. I mean, we can't afford to not do something this turn. Well, we're doing something. <laughs> well, but I mean, Urban Evolution isn't something. So, I see like, so yeah, we we have to impact the board this turn. Our opponent did. Our opponent has many large men. <laughs> yes. Let's see what he what he has here. Looks like he's going to go straight to attacks. So he's going to get in for seven here. Oh, he's only going to send with one guy. All right. I, I like just blocking here. With what? Um, the disciple and the frilled Oculus, I think. That's what I'm thinking too. If he's got a slaughter horn, or there was a two four. If he's got a slaughter horn, actually, then our adaptive snapjaw does play around that a little bit better. Yeah. Plus in the. But if he's got a 2-4, we're just kind of boned either way. It's more likely that it's the uh, the Charger. All right, so if that's the case, then it goes up to 7, and then we just trade the Charger for our Adaptive Snapjaw. I think it's safer, actually, just to block with the Snapjaw here. Okay. Yeah. Because if we block both and he has a trick, we lose both. Like, we have no recourse yeah. whatsoever. If he has a trick and we block with Snapjaw, then um, then we trade Snapjaw for a trick, which is, like, not the worst-case scenario. No. And assuming he doesn't add to his board, we're... Set up for a better block on the next turn. 
Yeah, and so he just just let that happen. Okay. And he's got the Bane Alley Broker, so that's what yeah. he's splashing Sending for it him. around so your opponent would actually cast it in their deck worked. Yeah, unfortunately he combined it with a bunch of huge monsters. <laughs> um, so if we Urban Evolution here, we can if we hit a land out of those three, we will have Spell Rupture up. Um, if we don't, we can just play Disciple and ship the turn and just keep Spell Rupture up, uh, along with uh, Frilled Oculus uh, Pump Mana. I'm pretty sure this is our window to cast Urban Evolution. Okay. I like it, too. And, I mean, we're, we're pretty likely to hit a land here. Our opponent's down to just two cards in hand. Yeah, so let's... Very useful. Let's get them. And I suppose if we don't draw a land, it's not the worst-case scenario as um, having... Mm. Uh, oh, is he going to counter this? he have his this? own spell rupture? It looks like he's thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. No, he's oh, got rapid hybridization, hybridization on yeah, that. Sure. All right. Well, they just made it a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got abilities we're going to use. Right. All right, so we could play a creature, but it feels like now that the, it actually is a mana leak, we should probably keep it up. He's only got one card left, though. I think the best play for us is to actually just pass, because we also, like, currently he has no pump. attack yeah, still. I like it. Especially, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that um, that rapid hybridization was kind of, I think maybe he could have saved it. I don't like know. our guild mage wasn't doing anything. Like, wait until we get something with a counter on that's it. Right? Definitely, that's definitely true. Yeah, we like, were about to do some, or have... A lot of options. We had a lot of mana and a lot of cards in hand now. Yeah. So, so that Bane Alley Broker is going to be pretty good for him this game, though, because we weren't able to mount an early offensive in any really meaningful way. And so he's going to get to grind on us a little bit with the Broker, which is kind of annoying. But all right, uh, so he's got that the guy should probably be countered. Yes, so we and, can, yes, we can. Yes, we, we can. Totally can. And we're gonna. We we couldn't before, but thanks to our wonderful new Frog Lizard, that yeah. guy is going to the graveyard. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All right, so that's good. He's still down to just one card in hand, and he didn't even attack, which he that's kind of could have. Yeah. Um, all right, so we've got some things going on. We've got a Metropolis Sprite that can actually start doing damage. Mm -hmm. We've got a Disciple of the Old Ways that doesn't really do a whole lot on the board, but just add a little bit more presence. And we've got a Croconura that we're definitely looking to start growing. Yeah. So I think we go... Um, I think I like Croconura um, Metropolis Sprite here. I like. Um, we could like because I like. I'd rather grow the Krakenura, uh -huh. but since he's not going to have attacks anyway, making the Krakenura bigger on this turn isn't that important. And we can grow it with Disciple and or Slaughterhorn next turn if if we have a good attack. See, I kind of like actually just attacking with the Frog Lizard we've got now, potentially killing something with the Slaughterhorn. Oh sure, I'm just then, talking about like what we're going to. And then well yeah, but if if that's what we end up doing, following up with Krakenura, yeah, and then Disciple, we can do that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like so, like, I kind of like following up Croconera and Disciple, although we might follow up Croconera and Metropolis Sprite depending on whether one of his two creatures is dead or not. Okay, so let's attack first and see what he wants to do because he might just take some damage and then we've got some different choices. Or he's going to double block. Okay. So, so which one are we more concerned with here? Rust Scarab's bigger right now, but one he's he's one big creature away from making Croconera uh, yeah, huge. A four six. I'm fairly certain it's Croconera. All right, and we're going to get to keep our guy. Seven. It's going to be five, six, seven. No, exactly so he is actually going to trade, trade, which is really annoying. Two for one. Yeah. Uh, two for two, right? No. No, no. We have to use Slaughterhorn, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's kind of awkward. Yeah, that's a good block. <laughs> yeah. I like his block. All right. So, which one are we more concerned about, though? I guess Croconera. we. You think so? Yeah. Because he's got to cast something with four power. He has one card in hand. Like if he's Simic, that ain't happening for a while. True. There was another Leyland Phantom also. Now, the Croconera will clear the way for our Metropolis Sprite, though, if we That's kill that. That's definitely true. All right, so let's, let's, I think you're right. Let's kill the, kill the Croconera here. Uh, do I even need to do this? Yes, I do. Yep, unfortunately. Yeah, I was going to see if I can get away with just Slaughterhorning here, but that's not going to work. But this lets uh, this unfortunately pulls our ability to play two cards this turn away from us. Well, we can play two. It's just not the ones that we not want the to ones play. we want. <laughs> yeah, um, which isn't really the worst. We're not facing down much of a threat here. He's just got the Rust Scarab. Yeah. So I think that I, my my play here is to is to Slaughterhorn to trade, which sucks, but it's a thing, and then to um, play the Metropolis Sprite because that's our offense. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you agree with that? Well, the Metropolis Sprite isn't going to pump our Croconura at all, so I don't no. see... Uh, yeah, I, like, I'm perfectly fine with getting it into play Yeah. right now. Plus, leaving two mana up and two cards in hand might give our opponent pause. Yep. 
All right, so we have whittled him down, but he still has a huge rust scarab sitting there. And this is a Draquin Crasis, which really kind of isn't super great here. We've got a Krakenura that is going to be bigger, and we've got a Metropolis Sprite that he's not going to want to trade with. Yeah. The key is, is he going to attack here? No. I don't, that's a terrible attack if he does, yeah. Unless he's got something sweet. Oh, my. Oh, that's a card. Now decisions have to be changed a little bit. Yeah, I think we can get in with Metropolis Sprite, no problem. Yeah, yeah the, the, the the question becomes, do we want to take a hit from the Draquin Crisis? And I think, yeah, sure. Yeah, so he might not even attack Anura Krakenura. Like, we don't even know if he will, right? Yeah. So if we go Flux Mage, Krakenura, go, then we can play Disciple next turn and get two Evolves. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think it's so definitely to play. And I'm also going to be pumping the Sprite here. Maximum use of our mana. Indeed. Highly doubt he'll want to trade off here. I don't know, man. We could have something sneaky. Like... Like the plus nine plus nine that, guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah. All right, so this guy, this guy. We actually don't get two counters next turn. We just get one. But we can set oh, it up. Be, we can set it resolves. up so we get two if we really want. Oh yeah, to. this one triggers. I totally forgot. Yeah. Dude, I totally whiffed on that. <laughs> <laughs> I I did not remember that one. It's all right. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Wait, you didn't do anything. Oh, wait, he's no, getting he's a card back. back. Oh, must have been a good one. Must have been a good one. Sixth land, maybe? Do you, do you six drop in his hand? feel an attack coming on? I feel like he wants to attack us. He does. There's definitely a flyer coming, and we are more than content to drop to 15. Yeah, we're, we're at a very high life total. Our Krokoner is going to be much better after this deck. What could he have? What is it, man? Adaptive Snapjaw. Sure. Could That's be. not really a factor here. Glad we killed that Krokoner. Indeed. All right, so... Now we get to go kind of nuts here. Let's see, we can pay two mana. So we're going to play Disciple. Oh, this turn's this so sweet. Yeah, we get to yeah. we get to move... We get to do a lot of move sweet Move a things. counter from the Flux Mage over to the Metropolis, right? Right. Play a Disciple the old ways, double evolve, play a Draken Crassus with our last three mana, double evolve. evolve. And evolve again, yep. Yeah. So this is actually really cool. Because the sprite is going to get kind of crazy, right? Yeah, like we're like we're about to move and cart over, cr or, sorry, counters over to it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we're going to be able to make it so that it's actually just much bigger, and we can pump yep. it like three or four times because it's not going to be able to be blocked. Yep. Yeah, that's so insane. I have not done this yet. Neither have I. Okay, this, this is really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, so now we want to play this guy. Uh, this guy first, right? Yeah, that's it's the two drop first. Both so he'll them. evolve both of them, mm -hmm. and then the Drake Wing Crassus will evolve the other two. This is going to be so great. The, per the timing works out perfectly, too, because now he doesn't want to attack into our Krakenura. But on the next turn, our Metropolis Sprite's going to have a four toughness as well, so he won't be able to block our uh, Sprite with the Crassus that is now back on defense. Oh, that's pretty insane. Oh. All right. So now we've got a whole bunch of sweet, awesome stuff, um, but what we're going to do is just attack with the Sprite this turn. Yeah. Next turn, we can start going to work on him with this sprite in like a pretty big way we've got we're going to move a counter from at least one yeah we're going to move one counter from the flux mage over and we can move it wherever we want let's see what he wants to do with his attack step it doesn't look like he really has any two cards in hand one under the all right yeah, okay. it's a sapphire drake okay yeah i was thinking that last turn but then he slammed snapjaw so it, it was like all right some will think he has an attack yeah he does not okay this is where uh, Totally Lost would be nice. You know, get that Sapphire Drake out of the way. Yeah. Um, but we actually have really good attacks here anyway, I think. Um, we might have to wait one turn. So we can attack with the Krasis. And uh, I guess he would probably just trade for his Krasis, which is lame. Um, we can attack with our Metropolis Sprite and make decisions. Because if, if he, we do... If he blocks with the Sapphire Sprite, we can move a counter over. We can move then, a counter, and then that's it. With the oh, Sapphire we'd, have to, we'd have to pump once more for the Sapphire Drake. We would? Yeah, it'd only be a 3-4. Oh, sorry, four. I was looking at the Flux Mage. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. But then, but then we'd be trading off our Sprite, which is kind of lame. But we'd be trading it off for his Flyer and another Flyer. Yeah, that's true. But it is our Flyer. Like, we would leave us with, like, a Drake, a Krasis versus a Krasis, which it doesn't... I guess it favors us... Eventually. Then do we want to attack with the Krasis and be fine trading that with his Krasis and move a counter over now and on the following turn when we move a, turn, a counter over? Yeah. At that point, he can double block. I, I so. like giving up the Krasis here. Um, he'll probably just trade it for his. 
and we're okay with that. If he wants to put the Sapphire Drake in front, then we're happy to move a counter and just trade a counter plus our Krasis for his Drake. Yeah. We may... All right, he does just block. Yeah, because I think that we're in the... We're in the uh, oh, yeah, we get a little trample. Do we want to use a counter to get one point of damage? No. Probably not. No, we might need them because we may need to move a counter over to our Krakenura on this yeah. next turn. So I'm just going to shift the turn back. And basically, we're going to see what he does, and this is going to be... The question here is... Um, is what where do we want to move counters with the flux mage that's yeah. that's what that's what the whole thing is right now our plan is moving our metropolis sprite because if we move both counters over <laughs> nice turn 12 glad for Roger. if we move both counters over it's a four five and it can attack pretty nicely uh mm -hmm. into the sapphire drake oh, he's got a mind eye drake which is going to evolve some dudes that's really annoying yeah that adaptive snap jaw is the fact that it has flying is just obscene yeah I mean, it's going to kill our Krakener before too much longer. But right now, it's doing much more work for him on defense. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, he doesn't realize that and attacks with it. That'd yeah, I mean, awesome. we can trade it for our sprite. Yeah. You know? That's definitely true. I mean, I think we're going to find a better source of offense here before too much longer. All right, so where do we want to move a counter? To the sprite? Um, we got to move a counter somewhere. We don't want to. We're not going to be system. attacking with a sprite. Maybe we move it over to the frog lizard. Why would we do that? Well, we're going to start attacking at some point, and it is not looking like it's like. I would like to make him start having to trade his flyers away with our ground creatures. Okay. And the only way we're going to do that is if we can get through the rust scare right now. And okay. so, move, starting to move a couple counters over, like we need. Like we, this thing hasn't attacked now. Right. Okay. But we need to. I mean, the problem is we're not drawing anything at all to uh, yeah. pump our flux mage up. Cause we're all right. Gonna, so we're, if we attack with frog lizard right now, he puts. Yeah, he doesn't have any good blocks. He has just no good blocks. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like that. I didn't see that play. I'm glad you mentioned it. So I think we just attack. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. It leaves us one other counter. Like if he decides he wants to trade the last counter on our flux mage for his rust scarab, cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That will happen. That, his wish will come true. He, he might just multiple block here. Okay, so he is going to do sure. that. Sure, yeah. So we're going to trade a, a counter for a scarab? Yeah. That so seems fine. The downside is this also leaves us with no counters on our flux mage. Yeah. And, and we, we would need, we need, need to, to put one dudes. on our probably sprite if uh, he manages to evolve it somehow. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, we need a raw creature, but I think moving the counters off of the flux mage is really important because when we do, if we draw like you know something small like a two two, then we'll be able to uh, make sure that we keep that counter train going. Yeah, I mean, trading. We're in a pretty good spot right now. It looks like. Yeah, I think he's going to ship with that. Oh, he's not even going to attack. All right, this is good. Yeah, he doesn't have a good attack. All right, there's an Oculus. Perfect. Resolves those. Oh, yeah, doesn't doesn't any... matter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so do we have any attacks right now? Um, it's not really looking like yeah, it. We could attack with the Metropolis Prey, but I don't like that attack. Yeah, let's just wait. He's got zero cards in hand. He's got a ton under the thing. One of the things is we've got 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We've got lethal if we do draw our uh, yeah. uh, gridlock. That you wanted. The downside is he's drawing two cards a turn. Yeah, that's overstated a little, but yeah, he's definitely well, I mean, at this working point, through his yard. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that doesn't fine. matter at all. No, do we want to move a counter here? I don't think so, because we don't know where we need to move it. Yeah, but we want, we do not want to draw a two drop, right? And like, well, I, mean, if, I guess we if don't, there a, won't be any urgency to play. Yeah, that and if drop. there is a two drop, we could all. I mean, we could always move it over. Like the safe targets right now are the Krakenura and the Metropolis Sprite. Like we know that the counter, we know that at least one counter is going to need to end up on each, like one of those two, yeah. before too much longer. Yeah. I don't think he has anything to evolve this Snapjaw again. Thankfully, I don't either. Like he needs another Mind Eye Drake, basically. Yeah. Keymaster Rogue would provide it as well I mean, there's a, there are a few cards he could have how would Keymaster Rogue do it? he can return his Mind's Eye Drake and recast it oh yeah sure but that's another Mind's Eye Drake alright I suppose that's true so nothing 
that's a big game, I think. That neutralizes the Snapjaw. It neutralizes anything, but it doesn't really enable that many attacks for us at this point. Unfortunately, it also turns the Snapjaw on. Like, yeah. he could pay a four-power creature and pump it. I mean, we could always return it in response, but... Sure. Um, do we have any positive attacks? Well, we can still send in the Metropolis Sprite whenever we want to trade for anything on his board, right? Yeah. Including his... I mean, we have to move a counter, but including his Mind Eye Drake. Yeah, we can, we can outright kill the, the Raptor and the Spectre right now with the, our Metropolis Sprite, not bother trading. Or we could trade with any of his other three creatures. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's bad for that to happen. Okay. Because... Yeah, let's just go. We're, we're actually running on time here, yeah. so we, it's yeah, always let's tough. Just, let's you know, just fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're not. I'm not going to attack. No. Yeah, I'm actually just going to do nothing. That's fine. Um, it's always tough. You know, when when we have two people on, we're always talking. We're always you know figuring stuff out. It's a much different feel than when you have just one person, and so that's the part of the reason why, um, you know, we have to be really careful of the clock. I'm, I'm talking to the listeners right now. That's fine. All right. So we do want to move a counter now. Yeah. So what do we want to move it? I think it's Metropolis Sprite. All right. Move that over here. Play you. And... That's the best time. Hold it. Yeah. All right, so we're digging. We need gridlock. Yeah. Right? We need gridlock. Uh, we can actually probably start attacking with our Metropolis right for too much longer. Okay. Next turn, it seems like we would be able to. Yeah, That's sure. That, well, I guess it's not that problematic. All those other creatures are flying already anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like actual. <laughs> yeah. Leyline Phantom. That's a big game. That's huge. That's going to evolve most of our, uh, all of our, both of our guys with evolve. And it's going to, so and it yeah. can just we can just throw it in with reckless abandon. Yep. All right, so let's do that. He's going to trade it. He'll he'll trade it off for something, but perfectly reasonable. Yeah. He's only got eleven cards left in his deck. Yeah, he is going through them at a rapid rate. And that does do this guy as well. And you like attacking with a sprite here? Um. You just give him a trade off for like one thing. Yeah, it could. I mean, it'll double. It could double trade. Uh, if you double block someone next turn, see if we, if we move a counter over. It's four power and five toughness. Yeah, I so think we, I think we need to wait. Yeah. To get the toughness up higher, so we'll move a counter uh, on his turn to it, and we're just gonna kind of move in on that sprite. Uh, we could have attacked that turn. That turn, move a counter over, and then be able to pump is. Uh, no, we need we need more mana is what we need. Yeah. So one more counter over and mana, and we're good. Yeah. This next turn's gonna be nice. We can move a counter over. We just need to make sure we can beat Mind Eye Drake in a single block. Yeah. Because he's he's gonna double block with something in Mind Eye Drake. So. Well, next turn it'll be. We can be, agoraphobia too, though. Yeah. Next turn it'll be a ten. Like it'll be a perspective ten power if we move both counters over. So. But but what is its toughness is what I'm saying. Like if it's, he it's, it's, it'll be a four five and then it'll be a five six. So yeah. it'll be a ten one, which allows us to trade off with any two of its creatures. Okay, well that's that's I'm, I'm interested in that. Do we want agoraphobia here? Um, if you agoraphobia, you need to agoraphobia. Yeah, uh, you can agoraphobia the snap draw. Let's do that. And then force him into having to double block with that. And we can. And we're gonna to send. We're gonna things. send the ley line as well. I right? agree. Yeah. Right. And then we've got mana. Do we have enough mana to pump? No, I'm uh, just going to play this in case. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to ship with this guy and this guy. And I'm gonna, we're going to have to start playing. He did not block. Um, All right, so he's got removal, but we have really no reason not to spend mana here. No. We need to make sure we can recast the uh, Phantom, though. So that's 6, 11, so we need to pump one more. So that's game. If he has nothing, he obviously he probably has is. Yeah. Wow, he didn't have anything. Okay. Thank you. Dot, dot, dot. Wow. That's a awkward. I am completely stunned by that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, Keymaster Rogue. Skyblinder Staff. That card is so good in this matchup. Let me see it. What does it do again? 
Their flyers can't block our flyers. Equip creature, blah, 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 and can't be blocked. Oh, cannot be blocked by creatures with flying. Yeah. Eh, yeah, that's he had a like, ton of flyers. That's why I like having one of those on the sideboard. All right, well, I'll go with the Nate Price plan and try it out. I like Keymaster Rogue here quite a bit. Like, we're going to have a hard time getting through on the ground no. in most spots here. I'm fine with that. Um, he's also just okay in the deck. Like, yeah. he's not awful or anything. We had some really good draws um, that were upcoming. Nimbus Swimmer and Gridlock would have both been great. Yeah. Slam Nimbus Swimmer with, like, a 10 <laughs> or something. Yeah. I still, like, totally lost. Um, does... Does Aetherize go up or down for us here? Probably about the same. Like, it's not... He, he wasn't really bashing with, like, a ton of guys. Yeah. I mean... I, I'm thinking it, about cutting, like, a Greenside Watcher or something. Yeah, Greenside Watcher's probably fine to go. He doesn't really do much for us. How hot are you on Urban Evolution knowing we're on the draw? Oh, uh, still kind of like it. Okay. Like, his deck didn't seem to... Like, the times when I want to play Urban Evolution is when I know we can resolve it and not just be dead. And it yeah. feels like we can do that here. We it might, was a big game for us. We might honestly consider taking out Agoraphobia. Yeah, um, yeah, I like that. Because if we're not going to be worrying about combat, if we're going to try to be Skybinder staffing them or whatever. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to play it a little oh, quicker yeah. here because I want to make sure that the thing, if he wins this game, we're going to be in a very tight uh, spot for the clock, and I don't want that to happen. No, just play quickly. I'll mention sweet stuff if I see it. Yeah. This is a keep. That's, yeah, this actually looks like a sweet draw. Yeah. F6 is your friend. I'm a huge fan of the F6. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lead with Oculus here. Uh, I think we learned our lesson last time. Doc Ock. He's going to get in for one point. At Jeez, must be nice. Ooh, that's a good one, too. We used to joke that uh, if you were... If you drew all of the basic lands for the colors of mana in your deck, it meant... It was an omen you were getting flooded. <laughs> okay. Because that never happens. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've put up essentially six power, and he's got Demir Charm for our Oculus, which is Perfect. good. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually not that bad for us. Does he have a Ceratok? No, a Denizen, so that's good. That's a good start for him as well. There's that evolution to bail us out of any potential flooding, but right now it looks like we've just got Guild Mage and attacks. Yep. So that Denizen could be an issue for us, but... We did get to show him a counterspell last game too, right? Uh, we did. Perfect. Yeah. Fear it. Respect it. Don't no, care we'll just about it. Just slam a snapjaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's going to beat us down here, and he's going to have a huge snapjaw, but we're going to have one as well. It's an exceptional turn for us. Okay. Um, yeah, so I like snapjaw into phantom. I'd attack before you do that, yeah. And do I attack with both is the question. Definitely. Yeah, I think so, right? Showed him Snapjaw last game. Which, I guess, not Snapjaw, the uh, horn. It doesn't really do anything. Like, if he really wants to trade, I seriously yeah, doubt uh, that. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my thing is that I don't think he does want to trade. Yeah. Yeah, Um. so Snapjaw. Yep. And then we can play Phantom, and then when we finally run out of gas, we're going to have Urban Evolution. So it's actually pretty sweet here. It actually might have been right to play Phantom there. Because if he has two green creatures in his hand, oh, this is not good. I like doing that. That's uh, perfect. No, 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 that's perfect. Do you like that or do you like blocking the, the denizen? Um, I like I like that. Yeah, I like that too. We take a lot less damage. And it's not like, yeah. And we're racing right well, now. Well, he just did nothing. Um, okay, so attack him. Um, well, he didn't show us a shamble shark. No, he didn't. And He didn't show us a burst. And I kind of don't care. Yeah. Is that yeah. wrong? No. Take five. And then do we... I, I go Croconura. I actually do Croconura and Disciple here. And that puts up four more power and toughness. And then we get to do Leyland Phantom attack you with Croconura too as a 3-5. Or as a bigger... Solid line. Yeah. So I think this is... Uh, there's the counter spell. Okay. So he's got a spell rupture and Croconura. Uh, hmm. Which we cannot pay for. Which That's is fine. awkward. But it's okay. All right. It actually probably would have been benefit. Okay, well, that'll work. Yeah, but if we led with Disciple, then he just doesn't counter it, and then we play Krakener and, and gets countered it. Well, there was it. no... The lead, is, lead with Disciple was wrong, but it might have been to our benefit to... Why is leading with Disciple wrong? Because it doesn't power up our guy. That was the whole point. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so we managed to win round one, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in just a minute for round two.